Hey guys, this is a video on how to do a rear disc brake swap on a third gen Saturn. What you have to have first is a third gen Saturn. You gotta buy the brake calipers, discs, pads, and I recommend a new hub. I recommend it, all right? Now, for the calipers, buy new. Here's the right caliper, and the left one is very similar. And the numbers, it has an L at the end of that. Now, these are from O'Reilly's. And uh, they weren't too expensive. It comes with the hardware. And then I got these, these brick pads. Now, to get the proper hardware, you have to enter your, you have to enter your car information as like a 1996 SL2 or SC2. And then you have to select the rear disc brakes. Now, you also have to get the cable from that gen Saturn, a second gen Saturn, to properly do the e-brake cable. So to start with taking the entire thing off, what you have to do first is remove the drum. Once you get the drum off, you're left with this assembly. What you can do here, I already have this off. What you can do here is you get a 10 millimeter socket, you get in there, get your 10 millimeter socket, get in there, take that off. There's a hole here, hole here, and hole here. Those are all the holes for the wheel hub. You can see those right there. Now the two top ones are spread more apart, the bottom ones are closer. And you're going to want to use a breaker bar for those because impact sockets probably won't fit in there. Now, after you do that, you have to go and bash the shit out of this to get it off of here. Hitting it this way, going and hitting it off. You can also pry off of these little tabs here on, on here with a large bar. Now, just be careful not to hit your uh, wheel well or any of that, and you should be good. Now, what you have to do with this is... You don't need to change your knuckles. You don't need to change anything like that. All you need to do is get the hardware. Now, to make this 10 times easier, I recommend getting new wheel hubs because why not Why not just replace them? It's a 20-year-old vehicle. They're probably old on there and they cost pretty cheap. And if you're doing this upgrade, it'll cost you a few hundred dollars, but it'll be worth it. Now, I recommend getting the wheel hubs with the ABS sensor on them because a lot of the time they are cheaper than these this style that has the closed just small metal thing on the back and then also uh it, this can rust out and and get holes in it and lead to stuff getting into the bearing i recommend the ABS ones because you can get a two pack and they're typically a lot cheaper get some decent ones because you want them to last now you want to save these bolts out of here and then clean them up with a wire wheel if you can and uh, put some anti seize on them for when you reinstall them in the knuckle. Reinstall them in the knuckle. This is what this is what the knuckle looks like on its own. Now, what you want to do after you get it all off is you want to go and wire wheel all of this surface. You want to bash off as much rust scaling and all of that as you can. All you want to do is go in and clean up the surface. Clean up this inner surface here because this is where this is where this surface sits, and you want it to sit flush. You want it to sit in there nicely and to actually go in. Now, I recommend going and coating this entire surface after after you use an angle grinder with a wire wheel and clean it up real nice. That way, it's nice and flat. That way, your wheel isn't you know all cockeyed. I recommend getting some stuff like this. This is any anti seize thread lubricant. This is some high temp stuff. This is a high temp copper formula up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. And just, just brush this all along this surface, all in here uh, before putting the, the wheel bearing on and uh, then putting the screws in behind it. Now, I recommend also putting some anti seize on these on the threads in here. But before you do that, I recommend getting, getting a little wire bristle brush, running it through there on your little impact if you can. They have sets at Harbor Freight. You got three through holes and one dead end blind hole. Now just clean those out. I recommend going and using your air compressor with a little nozzle to blow out any, any dust or anything in those. 
That way they're nice and clean and can be removed easily in case of a failure for the wheel bearing or anything in the future. What you'll have to do with these is if you have the stock struts, then you will not have a weird little clip there. This is the stock strut to my knowledge. And there is no weird bend here. These are these are aftermarket already ones and they have a bend in in the structure for this. I, what I had to do was I had to cut a small slit in here. I, I took this bolt out with this nut and uh, hit it out because I already had anti-seize on it and went and cut that there, bent that back with a hammer pounding on that, pounding on that bottom one. Trust me, you, you're going to want to remove it. It'll make it 10 times easier to, to go and remove that bolt if you can. Now, you got to have some good six-point sockets for these. Don't use shitty 12.1s or you will strip them also you want to loosen this not the bolt loosen that one um some of these might be cammed bolts if you have them for alignment so they're specialty bolts also uh if the top and bottom one look way different then it's probably the cam one on the bottom um and it may have odd holes so just just be careful to not damage the bolts. Take off the nuts and then and then work this in and out slowly if you can. Maybe loosen this slightly. It will mess up your alignment possibly, but uh, just just try to mark it if you can, if at all possible. Now, uh, also I recommend going and changing your brake lines while you do this. Either the solid rubber ones, good new ones, or to get these uh, stainless steel ones from. Uh, let me see here. They're Goodridge. High performance brake lines. These here are made for our cars. Here's these are these are from rear disc for rear discs. And uh, uh, I got these on Amazon for about hundred dollars. They're on other sites, but some are out of stock. Now with this, you want to go and and on the surface of, of where the wheel bearing is on this surface, you want to go and you want to put a lot of this copper anti-seize as well. That way you can get this rear disc off easily. Also, in these pins and everything, you want to go and fill those up. You want to go and coat them very nicely with, with some good synthetic brake grease, brake and caliper grease. Now, do not get this on the pads on the, on the brake surface and do not get it on the discs. You got to be very careful about that. Otherwise, it's good. If you do get any on there, try to use brake clean, wipe it off, brake clean, get it real nice, get it real nice and, and, uh, dry on there also you can blow it off after if that helps with uh air as long as it doesn't have you know too much moisture now with these you want to you want to use the the new the new uh bolt here included with it in the copper washers on both sides and then uh here's your bleed screw here's where the e-brake engages on here and it pulls on that it probably goes in there i'm still waiting on my e-brake cable there's the old one and they are different lengths you need to get a new one if you want the e-brake to work also this adjusts how this works you cannot compress the piston in here with a c-clamp you can't compress it with a piston compressor tool you have to use special pliers or a kit from your auto parts store now i use these pliers and these are ones for little snap rings. This is not the correct use of them. But what I did is I came over. This is this is the right side one. I went and I used these pliers because it's only about two fingers big in here. It's a real tight fit and you can't use Astro Glide. You got to go and get thin pliers down in there. And while pushing, pushing and rotating clockwise, it will push this piston down in. Because these pistons are going to be extended slightly from from where they should be and it will infuriate infuriate you on why you cannot get these to fit i looked it up online and that's the proper way to do it do not use vice grips or anything on there because you will damage the boot be careful do not have these slip off i cannot get vice grips in down in there as it was it this is a very thin area these were all that i had and then these also slip off because the one side bites whereas the other side rolls off so just take some time and patience and do it right. You got to get those down in. You don't want to cut the boot. Next, you want to go and uh, put the clips in here uh, with the uh, the flat side down in the, in the curled side here. You just set those down in and then push them in as well as here. Now, this is the sliding part, this entire assembly. 
and you want to take these bolts out put some of that that good caliper grease on there and then put these back in make sure they're all aligned tighten down nicely don't don't you know wrench on them too hard but get them nice and tight then after that it should move pretty nicely because this is supposed to float you got to make sure that that floats well this is all bri basic brake stuff just making sure that everybody gets it now you can install the disc and after you get the pads in they're a little bit finicky you got these these pads that have uh, a tab on on each of the sides um only only on the right side of the pad and then not on the bottom so just just make sure that that you know they're curved outwards like the like the caliper is um the top bolt this is the bolt that i bought it is it is an m12 dash 1.5 dash 30 i believe Jack. Yeah, right here. So I got these at Lowe's. These are M10 1.5 30s, and these are the perfect lengths. Now, you won't have to modify them if you have the stock uh, struts in the back. You will have to modify the struts if they are aftermarket ones because they are reinforced better. Don't forget that. And then also, you want a shallow socket. What I had to use was here a shallow socket with a uh, Harbor Freight wobble extension on here and uh, that that cleared it enough I'm currently using uh, 3 8 on here you don't want to use half inch because you won't be able to get it in there at all it'll be too too big this is just a little Stanley socket get in there that way you can tighten that down now don't don't wrench on it too hard you can see a full thread engagement, if you can see in there. You see the end of the bolt sticking out right there, the little shiny part. Now, you want to have that down up, up here. You want to have some, some anti-seize on that. And there's one down here as well. Down here, so there's two caliper bolts like usual. Uh, you want to install the proper e-brake cable from a 1998 or any gen 2 saturn with rear disc brakes and uh, you can order that online some auto parts stores may have it but it'll be a lot more expensive from auto parts stores if you can get it on amazon do it um also uh, i recommend getting the stainless steel brake lines if you can because it's only a hundred dollars for these and they should drastically improve your braking performance if you're going and doing this, make sure you have to drain a lot of your brake fluid out. Get the high quality, high temp brake fluid. It will it will be worth it because you're doing all this. Why not get the good quality brake fluid for a few bucks more? It's gonna be it's it's worth it. All right. Also, don't go and mess with this, which is the e-brake cable, or else or else it'll move the piston in. Now I don't have any wobble on here because I was manually ratcheting this and it and it sticks out so you once once you ratchet this at all now when when you first get these you want to make sure that this moves freely that this will move back this has got a large spring on here but that is not grinding or anything if it is grinding go to o'reilly's or, or call them and tell them hey this part number is i just ordered these i want you guys to order new onesies for next day if they can and then you just go in and swap them out for for the new pair that they ordered or the new ones that they ordered. That way they run smoothly, won't seize up or anything. You can put some grease in this mechanism if you want. I don't really see it necessary. Also, don't go too crazy on this, on the bleeder screw either. And uh, make sure that you reinstall this screw here after you're done shaping this to size. Uh, this is a 17 millimeter here. And so you're going to want a, a real shallow 3 8 uh, uh, drive 17 millimeter socket with the extensions. As I said, you can get a, a, a 10 pack of, of wobble extensions uh, from from Harbor Freight or uh, a $10 package of them or whatever. It's really cheap and I recommend it. And uh, it just needs the slightest bit of flex in there uh, to clear to clear the bottom of this. Otherwise, you're, you'll be all good. Um, you know, get get good high quality braking components for it. 
our brake pads share the same as like a ton of cars from this era. So you can get some really good rear brake pads. Same with the front. Uh, and, you know, just, just take your time with this job. Don't go busting any nuts. Spray everything down beforehand with WD-40 if you can. You know, if you never loosen these, use an impact and, you know, take take a lot of time on these. And, uh, you know, it should should all work out well if you do it right. Also, be sure to check, check your uh, trailing arm or uh, rear sway bar uh, links. And make sure that they're both the same length because when I first got this car, one was longer than the other. So that will cause wear on the car as it's trying to flex one wheel more in a different way. Um, also, be very careful about these. When I originally replaced these hoses, I had to use a lot of heat with an excitable on these. Also, twist this nut more than, than the nut in here. Hold this nut in here and twist this one. I recommend going and taking taking the bolt off of off of the back of the uh, piston here uh, on on this, going in and removing that out. That way, this line can spin freely, and and then you can use a wrench on here to take it off. Um, also, check for rust damage up in here in your rear trailing arms. You got to watch out for that on these cars, especially in the salt belt. The rust belt um that should be it if you have any questions about this please let me know uh i'll try to answer any that i can and uh, if you could share this around to anybody questioning on on what uh, you need for the rear disc uh, conversion you don't need new knuckles all the stock knuckles have these tabs on there you just need calipers for an, a gen 2 you need the discs for a gen 2 pads for a gen 2 uh, and possibly new hoses, and I really, really recommend getting new, new uh, bearings because, or else you'll have to take apart all of this clusterfuck, and it'll just save you time to just remove four bolts and just get it over with. Compared to messing with these springs, getting cut, doing all that, removing this, removing this from this, it's not fun. So it's a lot, lot easier to just buy new ones that are better, and. Uh, that should be it. Uh, make sure that you install the new brake, uh, parking brake cable for these. Do not use pliers or the special uh, like expander tools. Do not use a C clamp to compress these pistons. Remember, use pliers, with the V in there, and twist clockwise. Uh, make sure you use good stuff. Don't get anything on the on the discs or the pads. Uh, just take your time with this. You know. You're putting all this time and money into your car. Do it right. Also, uh, here's the part numbers for the brake pads if you'd like them. As well as the rotors. I got all of these from O'Reilly's. There's the other rotor in there. And here's, here's some good wheel hubs that I got as well. These were just made of China ones. Here's the other caliper. And make sure you get the calipers with the brackets on them. Don't don't go and cheap out and think that you'll you can get away with no calipers or, or no brackets or, or getting used ones. I really recommend getting new calipers with the brackets. It'll come with uh, the clips as well. You know make sure this this line is out and that, that the curl is in that way it keeps them back. Well, that should be all. Thank you for watching and please share around. Goodbye.